Hey yo everybody, Haku here with my review of Maho Shoujo Ikusei Keikaku episode 3. And this one was again very very good. Of course, not really as good as last episode because last episode made me like mourn for two days straight. My heart wasn't ready to watch this one. I was like, I was mourning for like two or three days after the last one. The last one just really hit me hard because I feel like the death at the end of the last episode just seemed so... Or, like, it's one thing watching an anime get character get, like, slashed up by a sword or something and die, and you're like, oh, man. But it's, like, it's so far from realism that, uh, that it doesn't really affect you as much. But then to see an anime character just, their parent finds them dead in their sleep, that's, like, the realism of it is just so disconcerting, and that makes the death so much more just just heart-wrenching and especially knowing that the people that found them dead had no idea that they were going to be dead just it adds to it so I think the show is just incredible just from that one death I think that scene just purely from a writing standpoint that scene was done incredibly well at the end of last episode and I completely loved it um, so yeah but getting into this actual episode I really I was like oh my heart can't take this I don't need this anymore and uh, this lived up to some, this definitely lived up to my high expectations. Of course, it could have been far better. It could have been way better. But it was still a very good episode. Um, so, starting at the beginning, we have Top Speed getting a call for help from Swim Swim, who wants uh, her to take her to Mount Maisho, was the name? Yeah. So, I like that. I like seeing more of Swim Swim. I like that we're jumping around a lot between different characters and getting to see more of different individual characters. I like that a lot. I like when shows don't focus... Because for me, there are some shows that focus so much on the main character and do so little for all the side characters that it just gets boring and stale because it's like, yes, I know this character already. We've been watching them for hours straight. Show me a little bit more of the world, a little bit more of the other characters. Give me something more. So I like that this doesn't focus too much. Even, I feel like Snow White or Kayuki like played somewhat of a small role in this episode. I feel like we spent less time with her than we did with some of the side characters, and I thought that was a really good choice because, um, I don't know, I like that. I personally like when we jump around, we see a bunch of different characters have a bunch of different stories that all weave in together. I absolutely love that. So um, this was done really well with that in mind. So we find out it was uh, Top Speed and Swim Swim's first meeting in real life, and uh, both of them were really, really funny. I enjoyed their uh, interactions there. Uh, Swim Swim says that they are g supposed to be going leaf watching, and that's what she's late to. But uh, Ruler chews out Swim Swim when they get there, and Top Speed is like, um, I know you, we're friends, and gives them a bento and everything. So it's interesting that perhaps we will get a little bit more into their backstory later on. Maybe they do know each other and stuff. Um, and then Tama is so freaking cute. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for another best girl after losing Nemarine, but Tama could potentially be new best girl. Tama's just adorable, and she has digging powers and stuff. It's just so cute. Um, but then we see uh, Ripple, and Ripple has actually found the story of Sanjo Nemu, found dead at age 24 of a heart attack. And I'm like, Nemu was 24? Okay. Um a few years older than me, but I'm like, okay, okay, Nemu, waifu, waifu-sama, because yeah, um, I was like, okay, she isn't a lolly, cool, cool. <laughs> that was just so off topic, I don't even know why I got into that. But yeah, Ripple actually found the story, so Ripple's figuring this stuff out on her own, which I find is interesting, but what I find even more interesting, she's figuring it out on her own, but unlike the others who figure it out later on, she does, like, until everyone else has already figured out, it doesn't seem like Ripple was planning to tell anybody. It seems like she was planning to keep it to herself. So, um, I think there's a lot more character development coming for Ripple. I think she's going to be maybe the second most important character other than Snow White, just because it seems like that's where we're going with her character. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll get into that in another video, because I'm planning to do another video this week on this show, just because I have an idea for a discussion. Um, I'll talk about it at the end of this review, though. Um, but we found out La Pucelle, or Soda is his, Soda's his real name, I think? But uh, he has exams in real life, so uh, they kind of like uh, discuss it, and they're like, oh yeah, we all do have real lives outside of Magical Girling. And they talk about uh, Nemarine and what she might be doing now, and my heart. 
But uh, they get a message from Sister Nana. We find out that Nana is the one who trained Lapiselle. Um, and Magicaloid is there, this little robot magical girl who seems like a bit of a dick. Um, and uh, they fi we find out that Weiss Winter Prison found evidence of Fav telling uh, Cranberry that they die when they're eliminated or lose their powers or whatever. And again, Cranberry didn't tell anybody this stuff. Uh, but Cranberry seems like the like she doesn't really hang out with any of the others very much. Um, so, yeah, interesting there. Also, I just... Never mind, never mind. I'll talk about it at the end of the video, what I just thought about. Um, so, they found that evidence. Uh, Ruler, actually, we find out, finds work for the other members of her team because they're kind of lazy and she doesn't want them to fail. She thinks that a leader has to protect and uh, keep them from failing so she finds work for them so that they can get enough candies. So I think that's really interesting to show that the stuff she does and the way she treats them, she has a good reason for it, and she has good intentions. Um, the twins want Tama to help make them popular, and I'm, I, I, I'm not really liking the twins very much. They seem like dicks as well. Uh, but then we have the mid-roll uh, card things in the middle of the episode where the commercial break is, um, the first one was top speed, of course we already know her power, she has the broom and can fly super fast, and uh, we find out that her real name is Marota Tsubame, and she is a former delinquent who's loud and caring, possible new best girl, I don't know. Um, then we have a swim swim card as well, and uh, her power is essentially Sen Senor Pink from One Piece, she can just swim in any object. Um, and her real name is Sakanagi Ayana. She admires princesses, and she's dumb, but she's a quick learner. And later in the review, I'll get into what I think that means. Um, so Magicaloid uh, replays the uh, or relays the info to Calamity Mary about what's going on with them uh, dying when they lose their powers and stuff, because she's like, you know, if this is what it means, it's probably best to align myself with you. Um, so the twins then make a PV. And they go back to their hideout and end up inadvertently meeting with everybody else. Um, then we have a really feelsy scene for me with Snow White and La Pucelle. I thought it was a really good character scene. Um, and we get the announcement that they can now trade candies among people. So our ruler is planning to use this new power to steal candies. Um, and it makes it possible to steal candies now, essentially. Um, and... What I think that... I'm going to get into what the Swim Swim stuff means now, because her, from her conversation with Ruler, I, I kind of put it together, and it was probably kind of obvious for a lot of people, but I'm thinking that she is totally the girl from Nemu's dream. The last dream that Nemu visited before she died, I'm 100% convinced that that is Swim Swim, because being a little girl explains why she's dumb, but they're like, but she's a quick learner. It explains, like, she's learning all these big words and stuff, but she's still, like, what, five to seven years old or something. And she's learning all these big words from Ruler and whatnot. And that explains why she wants to be a liege to a princess and seeing Ruler in the little girl's dream. That explains it completely. She's a little girl. That's why she's not very smart. And that's why she kind of acts the way she does. She's a little girl, but she's really smart, which is what makes her personality what it is. I just, I think that's really, really cool if that's the case, and I'm pretty certain it's the case. Um, and also, for the soundtrack in the back of this, when we see Ruler showing up to where La Pucelle and Snow White are, uh, Ruler's theme is really, really cool. I really like that character theme. At least it sounds like it's a character theme for Ruler showing up. But um, they plan to kill Snow White and take her candies, because, uh, yeah, of course they do. They're the bad guys. I called it from the beginning. I was like, there's a group of five working together. Of course they're going to be the bad guys. So, um, yeah, of course they're the bad guys. Though they're not really bad, and that's what I like. Um, I'll get into that first for my general thoughts, is I love the moral gray area, especially with Ruler and Snow White. Ruler's moral gray area being she's trying to protect... Um, these certain girls, but in order to protect the certain girls, she might have to kill other girls. So she's prepared to do a bad thing killing someone in order to do a good thing in protecting the uh, girls that are close to her. And she isn't doing it because she wants to kill Snow White. She's doing it because she wants to protect them and make sure they have the candies they need to not die. So I love that moral gray area. 
And I love the moral gray area as well for Snow White, because Snow White's like, do we even need to collect candies? If we collect candies, then we're making somebody else lose, and that means somebody else is going to die. Is it right for us to make them die? Isn't there another way? Like, I love that as well, how that's an issue. And it might be true, if nobody else gets any candies, what's Bob going to do? We can't get rid of all of them. But, uh, yeah, if everybody comes up with zero candies, if everybody just goes on strike, what's Fav going to do? But uh, either way, that out of the way, that would never happen anyway. But that out of the way, the show is just so good. I really like the feeling of fear and dread woven in. Like, again, comparing this to Madoka Magica because it's something somewhat similar. Madoka Magica did well. The theme of Madoka Magica was suffering, and it did a good job of weaving the theme of suffering in and out. And from what I'm getting from this, this is not really a theme, but it's something that comes back again and again. I love the way they talk about being scared, how they have sort of fear as this almost entity of its own, and they're just how fear weaves in and out of the story. I really like that. Even though it's not a complete theme, they just want to survive and all that. It works really well. I love it. Um, so yeah, the survival causes a moral gray area. I love that as well. I love how they spread out focus and we see all these different characters. And I'm like, maybe Tama or Top Speed, maybe New Best Girl, but I don't know if I'm ready for a New Best Girl after Namorine. But um, the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head specifically to improve this episode would be, and the show in general, would be if we spend a little more time with the real Koyuki and... Mostly the real Kuyuki, but uh, we could show the other girls in real life too. I think it'd be good to show them a little bit. But if we spent more time with the real life to develop them a little bit more with the magical girl stuff still in there, I think that it would work really well. And that's another thing I'm worried about for the series since it's probably only going to be 12 episodes. I'm a bit worried. I hope they don't rush anything because uh, the story is really, really good. So I hope nothing gets uh, skimmed over. But right now, I'm loving the development, and I'm loving how it's developed, but it's still moving at a quick pace. I like it. It's It's got a good balance going on right now. I think it's found a nice balance. Um, and even though we didn't get a death this episode, I thought the episode was still really strong, so I liked that. Uh, but basically, at the end of the day, I'm going to give this one 8.5 leaf watchings out of 10. I don't know. 8.5 promotional videos out of 10. 8.5 because I really enjoyed it and thought it was a really solid episode, but like I said, it could get much better. It could have been much better. Um, yeah, like last episode, of course it wasn't going to stand up to my expectations from last episode, but it lived up to my expectations for the show with something very good. I don't know. The number scores just make things all weird. Just know that I love the episode. That is what's the real important takeaway from here. I love the episode. Not as good as last episode, of course, because last episode was completely amazing, but still very, very good. And anyway, like if you guys like the video. Comment down there. Tell me what you guys thought of this, uh, what you guys thought of my thoughts on this uh, episode. What you guys thought of this episode yourselves. I'm always interested to see your differing opinions and uh, even your similar opinions. Um, subscribe for more Maho Shoujo Weeks at Keikaku and a ton of other things, like friggin' ton. Uh, follow on Twitter as well, try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel, like posting stuff, pushing stuff back, etc. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.